Okay, we talked about a lot of great information. Now we want to recap and wrap up uh, everything that we covered with the RX method. And I want to introduce Shen Li. So now we switched out to uh, a new demonstrator. And what I wanted to do was bring in somebody who did not have as much experience um, and take through this process kind of in a real shotgun fashion. Um, Devin was, was fantastic, but she obviously was an accomplished jumper and could demonstrate all of the um, points of performance perfectly, whereas Shenley will get a little bit more real life coaching and she's doing really well um, on her own. So, um, so let's, let's start and, and do a real quick recap. The right equipment gets you started on the right path, using the right jump rope. And we really are big proponents of using um, a good baseline rope that has a little bit more weight to it. For us, it is about three to four ounces versus a speed rope that has one ounce, okay? So Shen Li's gonna show us how we like to step into that rope, one foot in, stand tall. We never want your rope length to be taller, and we're just talking about the cable only, taller than the bottom of your sternum. If it's longer than that, you absolutely have too much material moving around your body that you have to manage and organize, and it's gonna force you to adjust your hands to compensate for that. So that's an, uh, an ideal size right there. Um, we, uh, we wanna hold the handles in our fingertips with a nice light grip, okay? That's key, because what we're really after is a nice relaxed wrist, so we have um, nice turnover, okay? Nice wrist rotation is very key. Something I want to point out is that we get a lot of athletes that will gravitate to a longer rope because they say, I trip, so I need a longer rope. But what they don't understand is they're adjusting their posture in order to compensate for that longer rope. It's a little bit of what came first, the chicken or the egg. We really want your rope to not be taller than that sternum, that round trip measurement to the sternum. And if you could go shorter than that, that's even better. All right, so we talked about that. We talked about um, proper positioning. So let's show our jumping positioning. With, with the right size rope, that's gonna allow you to be in this nice symmetrical um, arrangement where we're basically, Shenley is anchored, her handles are anchored about the middle of her body. We have even, even body on the top and below. So that will allow for that rope to have pretty even turnover as it's moving around her body. All we're looking for is about 10 inches to a foot of clearance overhead. That's all you need. So when you videotape and watch yourself back, if you see two feet or more of, of um, space of when the rope's passing overhead, way too much rope. We know that that rope's gonna come around and it's going to impact way too far in front of you unless you widen your hands to compensate for that. And that's what we're trying to avoid. We want this nice relaxed position. If, if Shenley just dropped her arms and relaxed, Okay, this is just too low. She's very relaxed, disengaged, but she wants to bring her hands up, so elbows go back, palms turn forward so that the handles rotate out to the side. Here is our nice axis of rotation that we're trying to create. That's what we're shooting for, guys. If we turn that way, Shenley, show profile, drop your arms again and relax. So she's relaxed. This is her natural hang of her arms. Now she's just gonna raise her hands up, elbows go backwards, hands stay at the front of the body, there's our nice axis of rotation. And so you can imagine that's the axle of her wheel as the rope moves around her body. That's key so that you can control the contact point in front of your toes. That's what's so important. So Shenley, how about just do a, a toe catch from there? Right, step over, let's see that again. So now we'll see that Shenley's getting the rope started nicely. Good, go ahead and keep doing that. I'm gonna keep talking about what's happening here. Shenley is sending the rope backwards first, so the rope is going back, then over her head, and we're trying to get that rope really nice and in shape before it gets in front of her, and that's gonna give her the best opportunity to hop through that rope, okay? Great, now how about um, show us uh, five single inners and a toe catch. Now we're gonna do five low, low quick singles. She's trying to stay quick and low to the ground. Good, yep, we gotta keep our hands in. Let's do that again, five quick singles. Nice and low, quick, 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 and then boom, good. And then when we go into double unders, we really want to see some nice elevation off the ground. Now, we, we really covered this, and I can't stress this enough. You need to learn slow double unders. That is so important. When you slow things down, you take away a lot of the pressure and give yourself the most opportunity for success. Don't worry about how fast you can go on a workout. 
right? It, what, what's important is that you learn good movement and you learn good integrity of, of, uh, of movement. Then you add intensity along the way as you improve. You can add the intensity and you can start speeding it up. But you learn it slow. How do you do a slow double under? Go higher. Simple as that. Give yourself more elevation, more time off the ground. When I work with Shenley, and we're going to go through this and we'll, we'll see if she makes some of her same mistakes, um, my common correction for her is you need to get higher off the ground with good technique, good posture, good bounding explosion, and that gives her more time and then she starts having success and she'll start stringing together uh, bigger chunks of double unders. That's what we're looking for. So Shenley, show me a double under off the deck. So remember one of the drills we like is just to go do one double under and stop. Yeah, so what do we need to do? Jump higher. Jump higher, there you go. There it is, and then a toe catch. That was really nice. Reset again. Yep, let's do it again. Good, yeah. One more time. Good. I like it. So, that's usually her cue. Get a little bit more um, time in the air. And if you notice, she had a really nice extended straight body in the air and back on the ground. It was really key. So then, we would take the toe catch drills and uh, or sing, uh, double off the deck and we'd start doing add-on with that just like we did with the single under so how about show me two double unders in a row make your second one higher than your first one and catch good and then reset and let's go for three in a row keep your hands nice and steady in in place while you're while you're bounding okay and stop now do you see how how awesome that was and that's the, the one cool thing about Shenley because she's a trained ballerina, but I gave her one little correction in cue and she did it immediately. That doesn't always happen. So we're kind of lucky to have this, this demonstration. But um, you know, I asked her just to kind of quiet her hands down because they were a little bit busy. Anytime your hands have too much movement away from this axis of rotation, you're changing where that rope is contacting the ground in front of your feet and that's what leads to a lot of trips. And people don't realize that. You're, you're self-induced. Uh, trips, right? You're causing it. So as soon as you just kind of calm things down and keep them in position, then it cleans up where the rope's passing through and that's what we're shooting for. So those were fantastic. Now, let's talk about people who can't get a double under right off the deck, okay? That's just a drill. It's a good thing to practice, to learn that it doesn't take a whole lot of energy uh, to do a double under if you understand the timing. And um, let's talk about that timing really quick, actually. I'm going to set your rope down and I'm going to grab our little 3D model here. Let's talk about timing. Our three biggest cues, so turn your hands around the other way, our three biggest cues that we give people are to uh, wait for the rope. We want the rope to get in position, so wait for the rope, jump higher, and slow down. Those three things we say over and over and over with people. And so all of that is helping you find the right timing. And what we're usually getting at is, you just hold it and I'm gonna spin it around your body. What we're getting at is ropes behind, behind her, you're good. So once the rope gets kicked into motion, it's going behind her, we call this quadrant one. Now we're going through quadrant two. You see our nice spacing here is about a foot. Now we're dropping into quadrant three. She's waiting until the rope starts to enter quadrant four, right? The fourth piece of the pie. And that's when she's ready to jump off the ground to miss the rope. And so wait for the rope to get in position jump higher so that you can turn the rope slower. Those are the three biggest cues that, you know, if you're a coach, you should be giving your members if the other things are falling into place. That's what we're looking for. So, with Shinley, if, we're, if I'm gonna take her through the, um, the sequence, if she's not getting the double off the deck, then I'll go ahead and say, hey, uh, do two single unders and one double under, stop. So we, we talked about this in the previous segment, just to build somebody through two single unders, and then stop, great. And if that looks good, and she can do that five times in a row, or 10 times in a row, show me another one. I wanna have confidence that Shenley can do that every time. Boom, 
and everything looks the same. I'm looking that when she's doing her singles, her positioning is staying intact. When she goes into her double under, that positioning stays intact. It doesn't change. The only thing that I see change is her body rises higher and the rope might have a little bit more speed, but not too much, and, uh, and she'll clear a double and then she'll land with control. That's what we're shooting for. So I feel really confident with that. How about do two single unders and then two double unders? Make your second double under higher than your first one. And then land catch, beautiful. When I have confidence that she can repeat that and she's not letting anything get crazy or out of, out of position, now we add three. And then we just go on from there. And then I might take away um, a single under. Uh, a big thing that I like to do too is, is take the rope out of their hands. If she's still tripping up, then I'll remove the rope and take that extra component away from her brain and just let her focus on the bounding and I'll say, hey, do two single unders and a double under, hit my hand on the double under. You're good at this drill. Boom, stop. Just one double under, good. And we're gonna do that again. Two single unders, one double under. Good, right? So I'm gonna give her a target, a tactile cue, and then um, I'll put the rope back in her hands and let's go ahead and give that another shot. So two single unders, one double under. We're kind of backing up a little bit. Good. Right, so you're controlling the environment. You're controlling what she's doing. When you see her going, you know, off, um, off pattern, then you want to make sure that you take her back a step. Right, that's the whole key about progression: is that you progress as you perfect that skill set, and then if you start to falter, you got to back up and you reset. Right, and it should be that simple. It's just positioning, it's spacing, it's timing. It's not that difficult. So, hopefully, that answers a lot of questions, and that's going to get you guys uh, uh, moving in the right direction. You know, one thing that I want to add is about scaling and doing double unders in a workout is you need to make sure that when you're in a workout and you're still, you know, trying to develop your double under skills, you can't try and uh, do double unders with intensity. You have to take the clock out of the equation. That's gonna mess you up and make you go backwards so fast. Really important that if you get into a workout that has double unders, you're not ready to RX that workout with double unders yet anyway, then you need to set a plan and a goal so that when you pick up the rope, you are improving your skill. So something I would, I would have an athlete do is, hey, today's workout has five rounds and in it is 30 double unders you know, with other movements. So every time you get to the 30 double unders, I would tell the athlete, I only want you to do 25 singles and then the last five go for double unders, right? And that's their scale for that workout. They're not gonna get an RX anyway. Now this is assuming that you could do two times the singles, no problem. Your singles are solid, you don't need any more practice on your singles, then you don't need to do double the amount of singles to match one double under. It's time to start doing double unders. So I would say, do 25 single unders, the last five go for double unders, they don't have to be connected, right? And that way you're getting practice at it, but you're not putting in um, you know, a, a bunch of bad habits, okay? And then you're gonna improve from there each time you go. And then once that gets better, then I would uh, maybe tell somebody, hey, this, the workout has five rounds of 30 double unders, do five singles, five double unders. Five singles, five double unders, when you're ready to start progressing, right? It's important that we start connecting chunks of double unders we, and, uh, and make sure that those are consistent, okay? So um, hopefully that helps. We really appreciate you guys tuning in to watch this. You know, please check out our uh, YouTube and our Instagram where we try and put a lot more uh, content out there at RX Smart Gear. And you guys can always reach out to us and we'd, we'd love to see how you guys are doing and how this information is helping you. Shenley, thanks for your assistance today. You were awesome. All right, guys, go crush some double unders.